Hello, welcome to part 18 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 86th question. Excess is an essential part of anterior shoulder dislocation rehabilitation program as it can have a positive effect on the muscular tissue and muscular strength. A physical therapist gradually initiates a group of exercise that involves constant velocity of shoulder movements with variable resistance. The resistance is given throughout the muscle action to allow maximum tension. This type of exercise is classified as Option A Isokinetic Option B Isometric Option C Isotonic Option D Endurance Exercise And the answer is Option A Isokinetic Explanation to this question is Isokinetic exercises involve constant velocity of movement with variable resistance employed throughout the muscle action. This type of exercise allows maximum tension throughout the range of motion to encourage motor recruitment. Isometric exercise involve constant joint position given in the variable resistance without changing the muscle length. Isotonic exercise is composed of dynamic exercise that combines constant load with uncontrolled speed of movement. Endurance exercise increases a muscle's ability to maintain or repeat a contraction within a period of time. Moving to our 87th question, a physical therapist plays a patient on resistance training program to increase strength in both lower extremities. The mode of exercise is double leg press unit using free weights. After one week, the patient shows 10 lb or 4.5 kg increase in the amount of weight able to lift. What is the most likely cause of patient's increase in strength? Option A. Muscle fiber atrophy. Option B. Neurological adaptation. Option C. Hyperplasia of the muscle fibers. Option D. Increase in the amount of actin and myosin. And the answer is... Option B. Neurological adaptation. Explanation to this question is... Strength increase in muscle is due to number of factors including neurological adaptation and muscle fiber atrophy within a increase in actin and myosin. Hyperplasia in humans is still controversial. Long term changes in muscle strength are due to all of the above factors. However, short term changes such as one week are most likely due to neurological factors such as more efficient motor unit recruitment, autogenic inhibition and more efficient co-contraction of the muscle groups. Moving to our 88th question, you are performing a musculoskeletal exam of a patient who reports to clinic with back pain. The past medical history reveals a long-standing history of chronic pain and stiffness. Patient had a frequent episode of impingement and inflammation. Neurological examination is normal. Upon palpation, you find thickened supraspinatus ligament. A mobility exam reveals loss of active and passive movement. Based on the above examination, which of the following would most likely to be the condition this patient is suffering from? Option A. Myositis. Option B. Face at joint impingement. Option C. Degenerative disc joint disease. Option D. Disc herniation and the answer is Option C Degenerative Disc Joint Disease Explanation to this question is In degenerative disc joint disease, the supraspinatus ligament will become thickened and the patient will have episode of impingement and inflammation producing pain and stiffness. Myositis is characterized by in serious onset often following a strain. Facet joint impingement is characterized by very little trauma. Normally, it results from sudden unguarded movements. Disc herniation is characterized by increased pain on the forward bending and sitting, as well as difficulty in standing up. Moving to our 89th question. A patient with right transtibial processes describe a right knee buckling in the foot flat loading response stand phase of the gait. The presence of which of the following condition in the patient is most likely the cause of this problem. Option A. Excessive plantar flexion. Option B. Stiff heel cushion. Option C. Low show heel. Option D. Excessive foot insert. And the answer is Option B. Stiff heel cushion. 
Explanation to this question is excessive processes of plantar flexion can cause insufficient knee flexion. A stiff heel cushion can cause excessive knee flexion and therefore buckling. A low prosthetic shoe heel can cause delayed knee flexion. Excessive prosthetic foot insert can cause excessive lateral thrust. Now let's move to our 90th question. You are evaluating a patient for arterial occlusion in the brain and determining the neurological problems as well as an appropriate treatment program. The patient has an infection in the dominant left hemisphere which produces aphasia. The patient demonstrates contralateral hemiplegia and loss of sensation. Which of the following arteries has most likely been occluded? Option A. Medial cerebral. Option B. Cerebellar. Option C. Posterior cerebral. Option D. Vertebral artery. And the answer is Option A. Medial cerebral. Explanation to this question is the middle cerebral artery is most commonly occluded in a left hemisphere stroke. It will result in contralateral hemiplegia as well as loss of sensation. Cerebellar disorder results in ataxia, dysmeria, dysdiodeoconitia, asthenia, tremor, decreased tendon reflex, and slurred speech. A posterior cerebellar artery lesion involves the main trunk with contralateral hemiparesis sensory aphasia dominant side, loss of superficial touch and deep sensation. A vertebral artery lesion result in reflexia, coma, confusion, dizziness and headache. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCU session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.